Jason as a Jane Black. <laughs> Introduction of both, and then they'll begin. Robert Williams, four highbrow. No, just kidding. <laughs> Robert Williams coined the term lowbrow to encompass the underground conceptual realistic movement he led. He's also the founder of Juxtapose Magazine. Robert Williams' art embodies the general lowbrow art. His widely collected work has been shown extensively including at the Whitney Museum of Art right now, as we speak, and, at, and he's represented by Tony Shafrazi Gallery. Um, and then Ezra Gina, Ezra Jean Black, his opponent, is Ezra Jean is our own staff writer and art critic, and she has written for Art US, LA Weekly, LA City Beat, along with other several catalog essays. Let the debate begin, Robert. Well, I, I have to start off by presuming that I'm in an academic crowd. So since that places me as the turn of the punch bowl. Uh, let me run through a, a brief little history of my art education so I can kind of give you a fundamental understanding. I came to Los Angeles in 1963 with the idea of becoming an artist. And I had wild ideas of... Uh, Exotic pictures like on pulp covers and paintings of nude women and hot rods and action and really interesting involved artwork and I made the mistake of coming into the art world at the wrong time. I entered the art world in 1963 right in the middle of the abstract expressionist movement and I was, it was pointed out to me really quickly that uh, you never spend more than three days on a painting you paint from your shoulder and not your, you paint from your shoulder and never your wrist. You use, uh, you use earth colors and maybe blue. And that uh, any, any tightening of the drawing is indicative of someone that's constipated. Oh, yes! <laughs> so I, I, uh, I realized that I'm, I was young and wrong and that I should, cave in and learn art like a gentleman. And I tried and tried, but I kept coming back to tighter, tighter artwork, tighter artwork. And then I was referred to as the illustrator by my peers. I was running around with people at Otis and Chenards and whatnot. And it was just pointed out to me that I had, I had a problem. And I, was, I was not expressing enough in my work. So I just realized, well, I, I guess I'm fucked. You know? <laughs> So I went off to get a few, few jobs to make a living with my abilities, and I uh, went from job to job. I finally landed a job as a, a, an illustrator for Ed Big Daddy Roth, the custom car guy. That, uh, yeah. 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 And, and through that connection, I run into um, uh, a lot of psychedelic poster artists in San Francisco. and. Uh, uh, through uh, Stanley Mouse, I met Rick Griffin, and then got involved in Zap Comics. And then I was in a pool of underground outlaw artists that I was really happy with. And as we got to talking, we realized we all had problems with abstract expressionism. Oh, no. And then we found out there's, there's legions of talented, capable draftsmen that were thrown out of the art world, relegated to doing B-movie posters and whatnot. You know? So uh, I guess, you know, a, a large section had to be cut out of the art world because these people were just too facile. Now, facile is a word that means you're too tight. That's a, that means you're bad if you're facile. And our critics were referred to you as facile. I'm a facile motherfucker, believe me. <laughs> goes by, I run into more artists, and I, I don't really have like a, a peer group of painters, and I'm a painter. So then came the punk rock movement. And this is my baby. I realized if I painted, I have a certain amount of draftsmanship, and I know anatomy, but if I got a little sloppy, I'd fit in. 
<laughs> now, what you need to be a punk rock artist is you need to express gratuitous sex and violence, and I have met that criteria. <laughs> So all of a sudden, I had I had a peer group of wonderful, liberal young people, you know, uh, Gary Tanner, Bob Zola, a number of people that, uh, uh, that had an energetic capability. Um, so I, after knowing a number of artists in my pickle, we decided, we, seconds. we decided we needed a magazine. Hence, I come up with Juxtapose Magazine. All right, thank you. As a Jane. I'm all about being movies. I'm all about, I'm all over being movies. I mean, that was, you know, my family. That was my family history. Being movie world from like day one. My birth was a being movie. It was very sad. Um, now, uh, coming, all right, coming from, all right, uh, okay. Uh, coming from my lowbrow DNA, um, with my, you know, Hollywood, you know, Nazi background, you know, uh, which, which nevertheless meant that I sort of absorbed the high German camp, and Lisa and I talk about this. Um, you know, I ask myself, you know, what is there for the lowbrow? Well, uh, you know, what is there about a so-called highbrow that a lowbrow or anyone in the segment or culture must offend and even cherish against, you know, one's, you know, native tastes or preferences? And more importantly, judgment. And I think that last word answers the question. It's all about standards and judgment and criteria. And what we find nowadays is that that is in painfully short supply. So, I mean, we can set aside the terms of the debate. I mean, and simply say that lowbrow won a long time ago. A long time ago. But that doesn't mean that lowbrow doesn't need highbrow. It does. You know, I mean, you know, what is highbrow? Highbrow, highbrow, you know, implicitly represents the canon, but more importantly, it represents reasoned decision making. It re represents judgment. It represents standards. So this is what, you know, I'm, uh, you know, pose, positing against lowbrow, pure and simple. We have a need for the highbrow. I mean, what do you want? I mean, you know, I mean, lo look at what lowbrow has given us. I mean. We have, uh, uh, you know, we have what? I'm, I'm listening to this. <laughs> it's like, you know, uh, we, we have like, you know, sampling and spinning as opposed to like songwriting. I mean, the songwriting is now like the pimp's broadside. Um, we have hackneyed and cliche written films. We have theater that is simply, you know, a noise box. Um, and in the art world, we have either pop, or we have the small p, popular, um, the stuff that would be small p pop. You know, I mean, this is just one slice of the art world, but the large, larger point stands. Um, but what I'm saying is that, you know, this is really a victory, not really of lowbrow, but of mass commercial marketing. And so, I have to ask everyone, is that all you really want? Is that all you want? Is that all there is? And my answer is, I think not. Yeah, I, what I was, I, you know, in, in a sense, the, the art world would seem to be the natural respite for the, high, the, the highbrow. Um, you know, you go to an art show and you, get these curatorial or artistic statements, they're, you know, hyper-articulate, um, you know, theoretical, elaborate, um, but, you know, setting the, to, to one side, what we're asked for